Hi right, guys. It is a cool, well, I'm going to call it what it is. It's getting cold here in the collapse of global industrial civilization here. At Bugs in a Jar Farm here on, it is a Monday night, September 26, 2022. And here in the collapse of global industrial civilization, and I have had a trying day doing battle with the New York State Department of Motor Vehicles <laughs> who has basically told me I am imprisoned in the state of New York for the foreseeable future so uh, maybe I will be spending a winter in, in New York since I have been uh, imprisoned here but anyway, that is another story for another day. So uh, I have a big pot of homegrown organic mashed potatoes bubbling on the stove that I got to get to. So we're going to make this a very short and to the point uh, chronicle of the collapse today. Some weird little story just showing up out of nowhere in the mainstream media today. And, and I think this is a good sign. I have no idea how this story from, I guess, I don't even know, is from the Herald Mail, somewhere, I think it's some little small town newspaper in South Carolina, I don't even know for sure, uh, where, where some guy named Pete Waters, uh, <laughs> has his mind on the collapse of civilization today. <laughs> Al, uh, Pete Waters is probably absolutely astounded that uh, his little article in some little small town newspaper somehow caught the attention of someone at Yahoo News. And uh, good for you, Jim. So uh, I'm not going to go through with his rambling, but Jim has stumbled on, I guess, that this uh, collapsitarian named Luke Kemp, uh, this is, well, I don't, I honestly don't know where, where the hell this newspaper is from, uh, but anyway, he was Luke Kemp, a research associate uh, at the University of Cambridge has a forthcoming book on societal collapse scheduled to be released in 2023 by Penguin Books. I am pretty sure, I am sure, that uh, I invited Luke Kemp to, uh, you know, be interviewed at Collapse Chronicles back when I did that with my life, and he politely declined uh, but somehow this fellow, what's his name? I've already forgotten. Somehow this dude, Pete Waters, has get, somehow gotten an advanced copy uh, of this, I guess. Uh, so we're going to gonna kick in right in the middle uh, and knock out the first part. Okay, where do we want to dive in? It's mostly, you know, he has a lot of quotes from the book that I want. Uh, Kemp, in studying, you know, past collapses of civilizations, wants to see how they may, may be applicable to our own possible demise by studying a list of past civilizations and longevity Kemp has suggested that the average life expectancy of a civilization is established at about 336 years but many factors are considered so what is 2050 well 2036 Minus uh, 336 is about 1,700. So 1,750 
if we call 1750 the beginning of global industrial civilization, if, you, if we use that as a marker, it looks like uh, we're done for in, what would that be, 2086. Sounds about right to me, I guess. Uh, we'll see if, uh, if global industrial civilization starting from the Industrial Revolution uh, makes it 336 years. But of course, uh, you, you know, as he says, many factors must be considered. Collapse can be defined, Kemp says, as a rapid and a rapid and enduring loss of population, identity and socioeconomic complexity, public services crumble, and disorder ensues as government loses control of its monopoly on violence. That one sounds prophetic, and I tell you, after a couple of hours dealing with the, uh, the New York State Department of Motor Vehicles today, talking about public services crumbling and disorder ensuing, uh, you know, I, I was thinking about doing a rant on that um, that scene going on down in Haiti uh, after they announced they were going to raise the price of gasoline. Good Lord, ransacking all the World Food Program uh, warehouses and stuff. Uh, and, and I'm thinking, uh, you, you know, when this when this shit goes down. Uh, when Mad Max gets here, like this crap that I'm dealing with over, uh, over some uh, question about my title and registration on my truck, uh, you know, I, I'm thinking uh, all of this stuff is going out the window, okay? Well, let, let me tell you where some uh, question uh, uh, about a damn truck title is going to place. Uh, you, can, you can just kiss all of this stuff goodbye. Uh, I mean, go down there and look at those latest riots in Haiti uh, and, and tell me how concerned uh, the cops in Haiti are about truck titles. Anyway, I'm getting off into my own uh, rant. Getting back to uh, Mr. Kemp or Dr. Kemp, uh, public services crumble and disorder ensues as government loses control of its monopoly on violence. That one sounds prophetic, says uh, whoever this fellow writing it, his name I can't remember, Pete Walters. Whoever, whoever you are, Pete. Uh, let's see. Kemp goes on to suggest that there are many factors contributing to a collapse of civilization, including. Okay, this is a real. This is a real uh, collapse. One oh one. For newbies, if you're new into this rabbit hole, uh, okay. Number one on the list, climate change. Quote, when climatic stability changes, the results can be disastrous, resulting in crop failures, starvation, and desertification. The collapse of many civilizations have all coincided with abrupt climatic changes, usually droughts. I was just listening to Sandy's show over at Environmental Coffee House. You know, she had Jim Massa on, and he, you know, he, he's one of the many people predicting uh, all of these soon-to-be crop failures going on all over the planet. 
I don't know. Uh, I, I'm getting ready to go have a big old bowl of uh, potatoes out of my garden. And I uh, already had uh, a bunch of tomatoes out of my garden today. Anyway, we'll say, okay, number two on Kemp's list, environmental degradation. This is the, you know, that climate change is just one subset. And I've got to say, uh, this is the one that, you know, probably Book Hermit would agree with me. I am thinking this should have been number one on the list. Environmental degradation. Collapse can occur when societies overshoot the carrying capacity of their environment. This ecological collapse theory discusses excessive deforestation, water pollution, soil degradation, and the loss of biodiversity as precipitating causes. Okay, number three on Kemp's list, inequality and oligarchy. <clears throat> Wealth and political inequality can be central drivers of social disintegration. This not only causes social distress, but handicaps a society's ability to respond to ecological, social, and economic problems. Wow, next on the list, cult complexity. And of course, anyone knowing the works of Joseph Tainter, uh, com complexity. Collapse, this is Ken talking about, uh, Kemp talking about Tainter. Collapse expert and historian Joseph Tainter has proposed that societies eventually, quote, collapse under the weight of their own accumulated complexity and bureaucracy, close quote. Obviously, Joseph Tainter lived in the state of New York and ran up against the absolute bullshit bureaucracy. And, 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 you know, uh, if, if, if <laughs> these bureaucrats uh, with, with their, where do they come up with this crap like they have thrown at me today about trying to register my truck and sending me through down into Dante's ninth ring of hell? Not trying to register my truck, trying to renew my registration. I'm getting off on my own rant. It's been a tough day. Okay, anyway, starting over. Collapse expert and historian Joseph Tainter has proposed that societies eventually, quote, collapse under the weight of their own accumulated complexity and bureaucracy as societies grow in complexity and problem solving becomes more difficult, can you say, trying to renew your registration on a truck in the state of New York, a point of diminishing returns occurs and collapse is likely to ensue." Close quote. Okay, next on Kemp's list from his new book, External Shocks. In other words, this is, quote, in other words, the four horsemen, you know, the four horsemen of the apocalypse. Do we all know what the four horsemen of the apocalypse is? And it is, the corona panic is not one of them. It is war natural disasters, famine, and plagues. Well, maybe it is corona panic. So, okay. 
Do we have the four horsemen of the apocalypse galloping across global industrial civilization today? War, okay, natural disasters, famine, and plagues. Where have we been reading news about those four subjects? Maybe in the mainstream media. The Aztec Empire, for example, was brought to an end by Spanish invaders. Most early agrarian states were fleeting due to deadly epidemics. That's when uh, you know an epidemic killed more than 0.02% of the population of a society. You know, back when epidemics and pandemics really uh, deserved their name. Okay, and do not forget randomness and bad luck. Evolutionary biologist and data scientist Indre Ziobite has observed a similar pattern and the evolution of species, which suggests, quote, if species, or in our case, society, are constantly fighting for survival in a changing environment with numerous competitors, extinction is a consistent possibility. And, uh, then all uh, Pete, whoever Pete is, and Pete looks like a nice guy. Pete Waters does look like he just looks like a nice guy. So uh, after reading all that, this is what uh, what Pete has to say. As I read Kemp's study and many assumptions, I would be a fool to sit here in my leisurely attire with a cup of cooling java or melting ice in my margarita and ignore the current situation of this country and many other world civilizations. Technology has taken one's thinking to overload. Cell phones and data saturate our brains Good sleep is no longer possible. There are many signs to our own civilization's decay. Have we learned anything along the way from Kemp's historical civilization autopsy? I don't think so. There you go, brother. Pete Waters is a Sharpsburg. Where is Sharpsburg? I'm thinking that might be South Carolina resident who writes for the Herald Mail. So, okay, we have the collapse of civilization showing up in the Sharpsburg Herald Mail making its way. Did I, did Pete, did Pete get one single comment? I don't even think I humped the Dump the, uh, responding to that. Nope. Poor Pete. Not one human being on this planet, uh, responded to Pete's, uh, to Pete's little essay today. You would think out of eight billion people that maybe even this Humpty Dumpty dude would, uh, would respond to it. This really shows uh, how many people other than a few Doomsday fans read that article. But anyway, you heard it here. You go, Pete. So, uh, if we ever do interviews again, uh, maybe we will call up Luke Kemp now that he has a new book. Maybe he'll be more agreeable to having a conversation with Collapse Chronicles, but uh, don't hold your breath for that, guys. Anyway, guys, 
I gotta get back to my mashed potatoes and then I gotta get back over to Netflix and watching this trashy series about the Doomsday Mother. Uh, good Lord, remember that crazy woman and that dude, that Doomsday author? I I anyway, thinking the world was going to end on, um, what was their Doomsday? July 22nd, 2020. Is uh, so I, you know, I mean, she killed her kids and good, good lord. And uh, oops. So anyway, I'm heading back over to the Doomsday Mother over on Netflix with my mashed potatoes. I highly suggest you enjoy your mashed potatoes while you still can. Bye, guys.